Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. We're inside the Bronco today. You can see we got our Timmys. We're ready to go. So we're doing a interior light on the Bronco today and we got it from Oracle Lights. If you want this, go to Oracle Lights. You can order your own. And what it is, is basically some interior lighting to go around your dash. Just gives it a cool look inside. It'll look cool in the dark. Obviously we're in the middle of the day right now, but once it gets to sometime tonight, whenever the sun decides to go down, we will show you what she looks like, but for now, I'll show you what you get in the box and we'll start showing you exactly how to install this. There's two ways you can do it, which I'll show you once we open the box and which one we're going to go with. All right, so like I said, there is two ways to install these. This does not come with the kit, but we are going to hotwire this right into the car, add it to one of the fuses. So we got this little add a fuse thing here. You can pull out the fuse from the car plug it into here and you plug this into the spot where the fuse goes and you can see it has the wire attached to it already which will hook up to the wiring from the lights so if you want to go this direction make sure you go to the hardware store pick this up before you start because you will need it and if you want to go the other direction this is your box open her up I'll show you exactly what you get you get your big clump of wires here now this is the other option you have. This is just an on off button, plugs into your adapter. Most cars have it, you can plug it in, on, off, simple as that. It connects here to your Bluetooth wireless adapter or whatever you wanna call this thing. And that's because you can change all the colors through this with the remote. So it's plugged into there. We won't be using that. So eventually when we get to that point, we'll actually be cutting this off. But if you want to go this direction, you can just plug this in. It'll power through there on off. Simple as that. And then if you have this somewhere close enough by, it does just easily unplug like that. So you can have this hidden, plug this in, click it on, good to go. And when you're out of your car or you just don't want to use it, it's easy to unplug and get out of your way. So what else is in the box is you get a bunch of cable here you can see you don't have any worry about not being able to reach anywhere in the vehicle because this stuff doesn't just have to go around the dash you can technically put this anywhere you can get it to stick but for us we're going around the dash these are where you plug the actual light into i'll show you how that works there is four because you'll need one plugged on to both sides top and bottom so you get that it also comes with your little Pry tool to push it in we'll show you that and then of course you get your big loop of lights here this is one piece you'll have to cut it for us they do give you a measurement for top and bottom it's eight and a half feet for the top and seven for the bottom I believe but I will recheck that once we get to that part of the video so you get one big loop of lights cut that to make it all work but that is it so for now We'll get going on the install. I'll show you exactly what we use to cut it, how to wire it, and how it looks when it's all done. And I also forgot in the box, you obviously get the remote. You can see you got all the different colors to choose from, how you want to make it work, on and off. can go with the beat of the music, brightness, and all that off the remote. So we'll test that out once this is all wired in. So only tools you really need for this, a Torx 30 bit, some pry tools if you got them, just to mess around with the dash and plastic parts. You'll need a measuring tape, a pair of scissors, you'll need a wire crimper. That is only if you're going the direction of wiring it into the fuses, otherwise you don't need that. And an empty glove box. But first things first, get your Torx 30 bit, loosen off these four. You got four bolts here. This handle will just pop off. And then your glove box, like all the glove boxes, you can see there's a little clip here on each side. You just push that and your glove box will fold all the way down like that out of your way because you have to eventually feed some wiring through there so that gets that out of the way. But first things first, get your handle off. All right, and once you get those four bolts out, just hang on to this like as if you're climbing up, give it a pull and it comes right off. It's just held on by a couple of those little clips and some guide pins for when we put it back on to make our life a little easier. Okay, so we have seven and a half and eight and a half piece cut. You will be left over with about a two, three foot chunk here. So if you're worried about it being too short, you can always cut more, you can trim it off later. 
eight and a half feet is for the top, seven and a half for the bottom. Reason it's a foot extra is because when you come over here and it hangs down, that gives you an extra foot to match up with the other cable inside the dash. Keeps it all the same and then just looks better overall. And now before you start putting the stuff in the dash, if you look at this straight on, you can see it is actually a top and a bottom. This little fin is closer to one side than the other. Make that the top. So when you're putting it in your dash, it'll go in like that. And same with the top, flip it the other way around and put it in that way. One thing Oracle says is you can trim this in half just so it's a little less material you have to try to tuck in there because it can get a little bit of a pain in the butt. But for me, I'm going to try to get it all in with the fin full size, just a little bit extra meat to grab onto. All right, before I put this back on, I will show you a little bit of the bad because there is bad for this thing. You have to tuck the top one back here. The bottom has to come here, run around to the outside of this and then down this little tiny hole here. Reason being is when you tighten this back on, it pinches this to the point where it's pretty much breaking in half. So you don't want that because once the light tries to shine through this, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna light up properly and it just looks like garbage. Secondly, the bottom, you can see we did end up trimming it because the way this molding is on the Bronco is the bottom piece butts up against this. Underneath here, the black piece kind of lifts up. So you can't put that through to actually stick to anything. That's as far as it goes in, and that's it. Even if you were to take that trim panel right off, there's nowhere for that to hook on and actually stay there. So we're gonna find another way to hold that in. But before you put your handle back on, you get this all wired through there properly. And then you just got to kind of tuck it around and screw it back down as you go. And then that will hold the outsides at least. And this side is already done. You can see what I mean. Go through here. It'll tuck behind there. And then this bottom piece just ran it around and down the outside of the handle and through the tiny hole here. And then that holds it on without pinching it. Because if you go straight into the handle here, pinches in the corner and then you're hooped. You're gonna break it and it's not gonna work anymore. And then down below, just let it hang. You can see the assistant is getting the lights hooked up already. And this panel underneath just unclips, give it a yank and it flips down just to get under there because your fuses are in there once we get to that point. Okay, now next step will be the actual part that connects into the lighting wiring part. Two for this side, top and bottom, leave them wound together because obviously it's right here. You don't need all the extra slack. The other two, unwind them because they're going to feed underneath here. You're going to come under this portion. You can see this little piece. I already have it loose. You can just pull it down, tuck the wires up in there, and then they'll go over to the passenger side as well. Same thing, you can just tuck it up underneath, zap strap the extra slack to whatever you need. But what you're looking for is you can see this one's already done. Just cut the fin off so you're left with just the round portion of the wire because that's what's gonna go into there. So you can see I got this one done as well. This is more than you need, you don't need that much. I didn't know how much you needed to cut off. But basically what you're gonna do is you feed this in there Give it a good wiggle. I need two hands. That's as much as I can get in with one hand. And then you got your little Phillips screw. Wiggle it, make sure it's all the way in. Tighten your screw down. Doesn't have to be super tight. It'll be biting into this plastic here. So we'll hold on snugly, even if it's not super tight, but get them all the way in. Feed your wires through the other side. And then we can start on the portion to hook it up to the fuses. All right, so we've got everything hooked up. You can see the wires are hooked up into there. Fuse wise, you're looking at the third one up on the left. It's a micro fuse. I actually bought the wrong adapter for it. So we're not gonna be hooking that up right now in this video, but if you have the right one, I bought the big one. I thought it was the bigger fuse, but it's actually the micro fuse. So I need a smaller version of this, but basically this will take place of that fuse course the micro one plugs into there just like that 
and wire wise you want to take your little button here just snip off right at the end cut that off and you'll have a black and red wire in here red wire feed into there crimp it down black wire just fine anywhere to wire it up so it's grounded you can use the little screw here or anywhere really that is somewhere you can ground the wire and you'll have no issues there but for now i'll show you how it all works just with the button because of course without the right part i can't finish this video and then running the wires wise i went up here goes over this metal plate under your steering wheel we went through here you can see this is off what i did was tie a zap strap to the end of the wires just helps keep it straight reach your hand up in there you can feel it pull it through same thing on the other side and it'll keep it behind your glove box so you can tuck it all away then we will wrap up all the wires nice and neatly afterwards this will flip back up and it'll hide all the mess that will be under there and then you should be good to go all right now just for demonstration purposes before i tuck all this away i do have it plugged in you can see the outlet in the broncos is in the center console here hit the button it turns red to show you have power you can see it doesn't turn on so if we use the remote on and off your adapter is this thing right here to run the remote push it and you can see she does light up all the way across looks pretty sweet and then color wise you can see you got red green blue and then all these other options we just hit it we got orange yellow green this turquoise blue solid blue solid green solid red you can make it flash you got strobe lights you have your fade it'll go brighter and then change color to color and you can do all that and then this is your brightness you got white so you can see that's full bright you can dim it down you can see all the way to pretty much off and then brighter 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 all the way back up so there you go red green looks pretty cool we'll get more video of it once it gets dark and once it's all wired up properly we'll show you again with the remote but for now other than just zap strapping the wires up on both sides and putting your flashing back in the middle that's pretty much all you got to do